Hey, everybody, welcome back. Uh, we are to a different type of sequence and consequently a series. Uh, a geometric sequence means uh, that it's exponentially growing very, very quickly. And um, some examples of what a geometric sequence even is, um, you can see I'm multiplying by two each time. And so what we call a common ratio is uh, two in this case. And actually, to get each of these, you can see in this case, we're going by one half. So half of that, half of that, half of that, and so on as we go down. And here we are dividing by, or I'm, I'm sorry, multiplying by negative three. Now, one way that we can figure this out is we take any term and divide it by its previous term. So in other words, 10 over five is two, and there's our common ratio there. Same here, one half divided by one is one half, Negative six divided by two is negative three, and that should go all the way down. 18 divided by negative six is negative three. 54 divided by negative 54 divided by 18, negative three, and so on. So it's going to be a common ratio. And from this, we can actually derive this, and this is a big one here, one that we're going to be using uh, quite a bit today. All right, so let's use it. Uh, and we're gonna um, talk about series. Series, again, if you remember, that is adding up a sequence. And if you remember, this is uh, the notation, the summation notation or the sigma notation. And uh, it means add up all of the terms of a sequence. And uh, let's jump into it. So for particular geometric series, we have a sub four is 12. So a sub four is 12 which is going to equal in our case a sub one r to the now if you look it's n minus one n is uh, uh four that's a four uh, n is four in this case so four minus one is three and um we also know that a sub eight is going to be four over 27 which is a sub one r and then eight minus one again is seven. Now what I'm gonna do for each of these is solve for a sub one. So a sub one is going to be 12 over r to the third. In this case, a sub one is going to be four over 27 r to the seventh. And what I can do with that now is set those two equal to one another. So 12 over r to the third is four over 27 r to the seventh. And we can cross multiply, giving me 12 times 27. So this becomes 324 r to the seventh, and that's going to equal four r to the third. And I can divide that uh, so let's move it this way. So I'm going to go four divided by three to four, and we'll convert that to a fraction. one over eighty one. So we move that this way, we divide that, we get r to the fourth is one over 81. When I take the fourth root, I get equals one third. So we can go back to finding a sub 11. Oh, now we need to plug that in to get a sub one. So let's go to here, let's say. So this means a sub one is 12 divided by one third, which means a sub one uh, to the third, which means this is 12 times three to the third, times which is three, two, four. So now I have a sub one. So let's go back to our original up here. And a sub 11 now, it's gonna be a sub one, which I now have here, three, two, four. 
times r, which is one third. And if you remember, it's r to the n minus one, and it's 11 in this case. We go down to the tenth. So let's see what we get. So 3, 2, 4 divided by 3 raised to the 10th power. We'll convert that to a fraction. Yep. Convert to a fraction. There we go. So we get 4 over 7 to 9. So Let's recap here. Um, we were given this information here, and it, we have two equations with two unknowns. And in this case, the unknowns are a sub one and r. So I set, I got the a sub ones by themselves and set them equal to one another, solve for r. We then plug it back in to here to get a sub one, and then go back to the original formula to work it out. So let's work out this next one. All right, so let's get R real quick. So R is going to be 117 over seven divided by 39. Let's see what we get from that. Seven over seven, close, divided by 39. Let's convert the whole thing to a fraction, three over seven. Okay, so we have that. Um, a sub one, we also have. A sub one is our first term, which is 39. So that's gonna give us our general term, a sub one, 39, times r, three over seven, raised to the n minus one power. So here is our explicit formula that they ask for right there. And then we also have a sub eight. So specifically, a sub eight is gonna be 39, uh, three over seven raised to the, now remember it's n minus one, so it's going to be the, to the seventh power. And let's see what craziness we get with that. So 39 times parentheses, three over seven, close, raised to the seventh power. And let's convert that to a fraction. Oop. Shoot, this calculator can't do that. So we'll have to do this by hand. So let's do three to the seventh times 39. Ugh, that's the numerator. 85, two, nine, three. Now the denominator is just gonna be seven to the seventh power. Seven raised to the seventh power. That is crazy big. 82, three. Eight, two, three, five, four, three. Let's rewrite that. 85, two, nine, three over 823,543. That is an insane number, I gotta tell you. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and move on to the next page here. All right. Page two. So here we have the sum of a series. Again, this is a big formula here. It's important. Now, what's important to know is that R has to be between negative one and one. And it can't equal one. So let's use this formula and find the sum. First, what we're gonna have to do is find N because uh, we need to know how many terms we have. We can get the common ratio. So let's start with a common ratio is six divided by three. That's two, it's no problem. A sub one is no problem, that's three. So we're gonna use the A sub n. It's going to be three times two to the n minus one power. And we know that the last term is 384. Uh, one thing I want to warn you against is um, 
do not multiply the three times the two. That's that's not going to turn out well because it has an ex the, the two as an exponent, which is more important. So let's take three eighty four, three eighty four, and divide that by three. So I divided the three out, so I got two to the n minus one is one twenty eight. Two to the n minus one. 128 is two to the eighth power. Nope, two to the seventh. So two to the seventh power, which means that n minus one has to equal seven, which means n equals eight. So let's find s sub eight again using this formula here. A sub one is three, one minus R, which is two to the nth power, that's eighth power, which we now know is 256. <laughs> I just did that a minute ago, divided by one minus two. And one minus two is negative one. And again, two to the eighth power is 256. So one minus 256. So negative 255 over negative one. So this becomes a positive 255. So 255 times three, 765. Cool. Let's do part B. Once again, A sub one is one fifth. R is one fifteenth divided by one fifth, one over fifteen divided by one over five becomes five over fifteen is one third. All right, so what we have is uh, a sub n is one fifth times one third raised to the n minus one power, and our last term is here. And I'm going to multiply both sides by five to get rid of that one fifth. So let's take this number here. Three, six, four, five, three, six, four, five. Uh, I'm going to divide that. So I, I'm going to get five over that. So I'm going to divide by five and that's going to be my, denom my new denominator now. So this becomes one over seven, two, nine. One third to the n minus one. And 729, I think is three to the fifth. No, three to the sixth. There it is. So this becomes one third to the sixth equals one third to the n minus one. You can see these are very fortunate that these numbers are coming out so nicely. In, in real life, of course, they don't. We'd have to use logarithms all over the place. So this becomes six equals n plus one, uh, minus one. When I add one, I get n equals seven. That's just getting n. Now that I have n, I can find s sub seven. Again, I'm here. a sub one is here, one fifth, times one minus r, which is one third, to the nth power. Seven power divided by one minus one third. Oof, what a mess. One fifth. Three to the seventh. I think we. Three to the seventh. Oof. Okay. So this is going to give us so one minus. Let's get a common denominator. 2187, 2, 1, 8, 7, minus 1. So this is going to give us negative 2, 1, 8, 6, divided by 2 thirds. Ah. This is 1 over that. Over 2, this is such a mess. 
2187. Anyway, simplifying this, <laughs> we end up with 1093 over 3645. So I'll let you play with the fractions, but uh, a little low on space there, but it all works out. All right, number four, part four, I should say. Now we're talking infinite geometric series. So now there is no boundary. It goes on forever, ever, ever, ever. And here is our formula. Now it's, it's going to be A, the very first term, divided by one minus R. And here is the important part. R has to be between negative one and one if we're going off to infinity. So let's see what that means. Let's do part A and start up here. A sub one is one half. R is one over six over one over two, which becomes two over six, which is one third. And R is less than one, right? So we're, we're good. So we can do this. So our sum overall is a sub one, which is one half, over one minus one third, one half over two thirds. This is gonna give us three fourths. Not too crazy. Let's try B. B a sub one is three. R is three halves, negative three halves over three, which gives us an R three, uh, negative three halves over three, right? So that's gonna give us negative three halves times one third by the reciprocals. This gives us negative one half. Now for R, which is between negative one and one, yay. That means we have a sum. So this gives us three over one minus negative one half. So be careful with that double negative there, It'd be easy to miss that. It was three over one plus one half is three halves. Now let's talk about what this means. We're adding up an infinite number of terms up here as well. An infinite number of terms and we're getting exactly a finite number, exactly two. That should mess with your head a little. That, that's, that's crazy. All right, let's, let's try part C here. We'll go down here, C. All right, now when I plug in zero there, anything to the zero power is one. So A sub one in this case is just five, five times one for the first term. R in this case is the three fourths. That's our common ratio there, which is between negative one and one, again, which fits our criteria. If it's not, then we just say it, it diverges, actually, is the, the technical term. Uh, when it comes to a specific number, we say that it converges, it comes to a specific value. So let's do this. S is five over one minus three fourths. Looks like S is gonna be 20 in this case. Again, this is adding up an infinite number of pieces and getting a finite number. That's crazy. All right, last part. All right, so here are some applications. Suppose you go to a company that pays four cents for the first day, eight cents for the second day, 16 cents for the third day, and so on. Page keeps doubling your total income be for working 30 days. All right, so let's start with part A. And A sub one is 0 0.04, that's our first term. R is going to be 0 0.08 over 0 0.04. And if we divide that out, I believe that is two points, uh, 0 0.08 divided by 0 0.04, that is two. And so we are going to be using the formula S sub 30 equals A sub one, one minus R to the 30th over one minus R. 
And we know a sub one is 0 0.04, r is two, one minus two to the 30th. Ooh, this is gonna be a crazy big number. One minus two. So one minus two to the 30th. That is an enormous number. And that's gonna be divided by negative one, we can see there, so that's, Positive one zero seven three seven four one eight two three, because a negative divided by negative is a positive. Let's see, that is a huge number. Hundred thousand million billion over a billion, then times point zero four. All right, it's not negative anymore, so we'll just ignore that. So four two nine four nine six seven two. 92 cents, so 42 million dollars. That is a job worth taking. All right, part B. A ball is dropped from a height of 40 meters. Each time the ball bounces, it returns uh, to five eighths of the height it fell from. Uh, let a sub n represent the maximum height of the ball to the nth bounce. What is the formula that describes a sub n expressed as a common ratio? Let's start here. It looks like a sub 1 is going to be the first bounce. And that's going to be 40 times 40 times 5 over 8, which I think is 25. And if we do uh, 25 over 40, that reduces to 5 over 8. So this is our r, which we knew it was 5 eighths. So they kind of strongly hinted at that. All right, so let's come up with a general equation. This is going to be 25 times 5 over 8 raised to the n minus 1 power. So here is our generalized function. This is part one. Part two is going to be, what is the maximum height of the ball on the eighth bounce? So n equals eight. So that's gonna be a sub eight is 25 times five over eight raised to the n minus one, so that's seventh power. So let's see what we get. Five to the seventh times twenty-five. Yeah. One nine five three one two five. These numbers are massive. Divided by eight to the seventh. Oops. Eight to the seventh. <laughs> so two zero nine seven one. Five, two. That does not reduce. <laughs> we could get a decimal approximation, but we may as well uh, stay as, uh, as accurate as we can. Well, I hope this clears things up. <laughs>